So, um, as is our tradition in our church, we stand in reverence at the reading of God's word. Um, so again, we're in, we're in Ruth, chapter one, starting at verse seven, reads as follows. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go, return each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back, my daughters, why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Oprah, turn to your neighbor and say, not Oprah. Orpah <laughs> kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. Woo, man, some of the, the mothers of the church, man, I wish I had a, mother, a daughter-in-law like that, right? <laughs> um, verse 18, and when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said, no more. Let's keep going. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the woman said, and the women said, is this Naomi? She said to them, do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full, and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? So Naomi returned in Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the obeying of his holy word. For the time that is ours together today, I'd like to preach to you from this simple subject or topic, godly devotion. Godly devotion, godly devotion. Let us pray. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. May the words from my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. Lord God, decrease me, minimize me, hide me behind your cross, that what is seen, what is made visible is you and your revelation. And that after the preaching of the gospel, if someone needs to know what must they do to be saved, that they know salvation comes undoubtedly, unequivocally through you, Jesus Christ, our personal risen Lord and Savior. Let all of God's people say together, amen, amen, amen. godly devotion. I believe one of the biggest areas that has been studied and, and looked at when you look at um, sociology and you, you look at areas have people wanted to have known about is the black family. That um, over 56 years ago, a man by the name of Daniel Patrick Monahan produce what is called the, the Negro family, a, a, a call for um, a national call for action. That after this 
particular report was presented, it presented the, the, what, what, what he believed was the state of the black family. That, that, that it said that, that, that black families tend to be, be run more often than not by, by females, sisters. And that over 94% of those families were, 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 did not have a male in the household. That, that, that it, it gave this perspective of, of black families as if the, the husbands or the fathers were not around. Never, never mind in the fact that the children needed, the mother needed a little help to be able to bring the children into the world. The children didn't get there on their own just from the mother. That, that, that to the point that, 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 that many of you, when, when it was the late 80s and, and 90s, that, 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 that when you first had the chance to see the Huxtable family, that that, that, that was the perspective that, that many people had of the black family, especially the younger generation. I know at least my generation. But, but, but for those who had been around a spell, you knew that that was not the first time that we had seen on TV the black family, that it was in the 70s, that, that you had the first on TV screen image view of the black family, that, that every week you could turn in, you could tune in on CBS, and you could see a family that was led by James and Florida Evans, that, was by, that the show was named Good Times. That, that it was the first time on TV that you could see a family up front and see some of the challenges and the difficulties that happens in a family, in a nuclear family. And, and that many people were caught off guard to see to see the dynamics that can happen in an African-American family, some of the conversations that can happen and, and some of the, the, um, the correction and discipline of children that could happen. To see every week some of the, the yelling and, and the loudness that would happen in the family, you know, a, a, a household that seems like it had everybody was an extrovert, that, that it caught the nation off guard to see this family. This family as it was centered in Chicago, this family as they were dealing with the issues of systemic racism, this family is dealing with the challenges that happens when you don't get a good education, you know, you only make it to the sixth or seventh grade. This family dealing in the inner city and having to grapple with the challenges of making sure your children get home safely. That, that you saw this family that every single week that, that James Evans worked two, three jobs and that and, and, and it, it never hit me how in the world that they make this work with Sister Florida Evans being at home taking care of the family. That, 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 that they, they, they had, she, she was a homemaker and she was a woman of God. That, 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 that you could see sometimes discussions about faith and about what was the color of Jesus. That was one episode. You, you got a chance to see the church and, and see what really the church was about and what preachers ought to be about. You, you dealt with issues of having children and, 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 and you had issues of dating. You even had power to the people with the young son as he, he talked about some of the challenges that he was seeing in school as they promoted in the history a narrative of the nation that he did not see was oftentimes true. In fact, one week he decided I'm not going to even go to school no more because he disrespected the first president, Washington. But, but, as, but, but I must admit for myself, I love watching the show and it was many different episodes that really moved me. But, 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 but as I thought about over those six years of, of seeing that show, what touched me the most was the relationship, the friendship between Florida and Wilona. <laughs> so some of y'all who watch, you ought to know what I'm talking about, that, that it was another character, a main character, her, her best friend by the name of Wilona. That when she was dealing with challenges and trying to work through issues of life, trying to figure out how to talk to her, her strong husband about some issues that around his health and getting a physical, that she would talk to her friend Walona Wood. That, that, that Walona, who eventually becomes the mother of Janet Jackson on the show. That, that it was Alona that every single episode showed up in the house and was always right on time to give Florida a word of encouragement.
They could always let her know that she was beautiful and she was beautiful just how she was as a beautiful black woman. That that was what Lona that encouraged her. That, that it was one episode where she said, look, sister, you can count on me. In fact, you can spell my name H-E-L-P. That I'm going to be there for you. I will help you. That as the seasons went on, when, when James Evans would, would die, that she was there with the family to comfort Florida Evans. That Florida Evans knew that at least she had one friend in the world, and that was her friend, Walona. But, but, but I stopped by today to tell you that, that Walona wasn't just the first friend to show up in someone's life, a person of God's life, to be there for them when they went through their challenges and their trials. Because today we find another Walona, so to speak, her name is by the name of Ruth. That, that, that Ruth is also another woman who shows up in the Bible that after Naomi has lost her husband, has lost her children, she's lost everything. She's in the world without what would have been her security and her safety net. And she has a sister, a, a, a daughter-in-law by the name of Ruth. That Ruth, as we read today, said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to be there with you. I'm not going to abandon you. We're going to get through this thing together. That she says, look, you got a friend. That, that, that we're going to do this thing together. That I, I know you lost your husband. I know you lost your children. I know this is risky trying to make your way back home. But I'm not going to let you do it by yourself. Now, now, that should shout some of you when you look back over your life. And when you look back in some of the times when you got in some difficult places and you found yourself away from home and trying to figure out how to get yourself back to home. And I'm talking about the church right now, by the way, that, that you went out into the world. You did your own thing. You decided to make your own decisions. And you were, when you got yourself together, when you got your head right, you want to know, how could I get back home? And it was somebody who prayed for you. It might have been a parent who had had you on their mind. It could have been one of the mothers of the church who when you came back, they welcomed you in like Mother Bird and they welcomed you back home and said, you're not going to have to do this by yourself. That, that, that you're not going to have to raise those kids by yourself. You're not going to have to go try to figure out how you're going to work out your financial issues by yourself. That, that, that as you, you young sister who just got married, you're not going to have to figure this out all by yourself. I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to walk with you because I care for you and I love you. That, that, that's, that's the narrative that we see here in the passage today. And there's just a few little points I want to make and we can celebrate because we see here when we arrive in this beautiful text today, when we arrive and see Sister Ruth and see Sister Naomi make their way back to Bethlehem from Moab, we see that, that godly devotion is rewarded by God. Hmm. That, 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 that look, Ruth and Orpah in verses 1 through 3, that in verses 8 through 9, have been good daughters-in-law. It's going to get quiet in here. I know it's going to get quiet, but let's hang on in. Let's hang on in. Put your seatbelt on. That, 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 that they've been some good daughters-in-law. But not only some good daughters-in-law, they've been some good wives and some good mothers. They've been so good that when it come time for when the, when the sons have died, when the husband of, of Naomi has died, when she realizes the famine in Moab is so bad that what brought them to Moab is now showed up in Moab, but she's heard that some bread back in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is the house of bread, by the way. That's what it means, that when they heard it's some food back in Bethlehem, she, she decides to make her way back, but then she lets her, her daughters-in-law know, look, you don't have to come with me, you don't have to go back with me. You've been such a good daughter-in-law. You've been such a good wife. You've been so good to my sons that look, God is going to bless you. God is going to reward you for your devotion. Hmm. That, that, that you know God rewards you for your devotion. That, that, that we don't preach no pie in the sky when you are committed to the things of God. That when you're committed to your family, when you're committed to your children, when you're committed to your marriage, when you're committed to the body of Christ, that God will give you a reward 
for it. Um, Jesus Christ told the disciples this way, don't think for a minute in Mark chapter 10. 10 don't think for a minute that what you've done, you're not going to be rewarded for it. Don't think that you've done this in vain. Don't think that you followed me and it's not going to be something that God is going to give to you. And then he says, look, everything that you've given up for me, everything you've sacrificed, you're going to get it back. You're going to be rewarded for putting your trust in me. Pastor Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says, look what we believed in, what we've put our trust in, in Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't think that when you die that that's the end, that it is over. No, this ain't no fickle faith. No, there is a resurrection. I know there's a resurrection because Jesus Christ was resurrected. Some folks saw Jesus Christ. I saw him on the Damascus road. So he told me that it is. he was resurrected, that I can be resurrected. I'm going to get a reward for my faith. I'm going to get a reward for my devotion to Jesus Christ and de my devotion to the body of Christ. That godly devotion is rewarded. Huh. Uh, but not only is it rewarded when Jesus comes back, it's also rewarded even right now. That, 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 that when we pass, turn the pages and arrive in chapter 2, some folks have heard about Ruth and how she's been so faithful and devoted to her mother-in-law that, that a brother by the name of Boaz tells her that the Lord God is going to reward you for your faithfulness, that the Lord God is going to bless you for taking care of your mother-in-law, that because you've been devoted to her, God going to take care of you. And we used to put it in some of our 21st century, some of our Gen Z, millennial vernacular. He's saying God is going to hook you up. <laughs> that God is going to bless you. That God is going to show you that he can do it seedly abundantly above all you could ever ask according to his power at work within you. He, he says, look, because you put your trust in the Lord and you've been taking care of your mother-in-law. He says, you are up under the wings of the Lord. Hmm. That's in Ruth chapter 2, verse 12. He says, the Lord repay you for what you've done, and a full reward be given to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Because when we come to the church, when we come to the body of Christ, we come many times broken and we come with all our life's issues and all of our problems and we come seeking refuge under the wings of the Lord. And, and, and when we put our trust in the Lord, when we are committed, devoted to the Lord, he says the Lord God of Israel, the people of God, and I've told you before, this is the people who God contended with. These are the people who have not been perfect. They've not made all the right decisions. They didn't go left when they, was, when they were supposed to. They went right. They were the ones who were always questioning God. They didn't always trust God with every single thing. But he says that God of Israel will reward you for your faithfulness. Uh, what you're talking about, preacher, you ought to be able to identify with some folks who ain't always made the right decisions, haven't always walked faithfully with the Lord God all of their life. You ain't been saved all your life. You didn't make all the right decisions. You have some, some things that you've done wrong, some sin in your life, but God, if you're faithful, if you hold on to his unchanging hand, God will reward you. Follow me through the passage of Scripture. Psalm 36, verse 7 says, How precious is your steadfast love, O God! The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. That, that they, they, they commit themselves to the protection of the Lord God because his love is steadfast. Psalm 57, verse 1 says, Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me, for you for in you my soul takes refuge in the shadow of your wings. I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. That when I put my trust in the Lord, he will shade you and shield you from storms and fiery blasts that will come in life. In other words, it won't take you out. You may lose some things. You may experience some setbacks. But God will shield you and preserve you and keep you so you make it through. Like Isaiah said, he'll keep you in perfect peace when your mind 
God has stayed on him, won't he? Won't he? You'll be able to make it through this thing. God will bring you through this thing. It may be difficult. You may have to cry some nights. You may have to be wondering why you have found yourself in this situation. But God, if you commit yourself to him, he will keep you. He'll keep you. If you stay under his wings, we find in Psalm 63, verse 7, that it says, You have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing joy. Psalm 91, chapter 4, he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. But then I like when you get into the gospel, you get into the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 23 and verse 37, Jesus says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills its prophets and stones, those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers the brood under her wings and you were not willing. God rewards those who are devoted to him. Godly devotion is rewarded by God. And, and it's a sad, sad state of affairs that we commit ourselves to every single thing but the Lord God. We, 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 we will question the Lord God's word all the time. But we will sit up there and let some folks mistreat us and, and we will vote for some people who do all kind of crazy stuff and we won't raise no kind of question or act like we don't know how we got into this thing. He says, look, I wanted to gather you. I want you to be devoted to me. I want you to commit yourself to me because the Lord God rewards godly devotion. Ruth has been a devoted wife. She's been a devoted mother-in-law. Oprah at Oprah at this time, at this point, has been a devoted daughter-in-law, a devoted um, wife. And, and, and as Ruth and as Naomi invokes the word, she says, Look, God will reward you for your faithfulness. Don't give up on the Lord in the in the in, in, I, I'll say right now, the middle of this pandemic. Don't turn your back on the Lord because it's looking really bad right now. Don't give up on the Lord because they, they said they running out of vaccines right now. Don't give up on the Lord because you see some folks made some promises that you voted for and they ain't going to keep their promises. Don't give up on the Lord because you saw some crazy stuff on, 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 on ton public TV with some of your elected officials. Don't give up on the Lord because they don't, they don't want to advocate for biblical justice. They don't want to care about, they don't care about brown skin children and, and brown skin people don't give up on Lord don't lose your faith say devoted to the Lord because the Lord God will reward your faithfulness <laughs> but can I push it a little bit further not only does God not is not only is godly devotion rewarded by God but godly devotion is tested through crisis <laughs> Verses 11 through 13. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, they got some choices to pick from. They can go back to what they know. They, they get an exit route. They get an exit ramp in the relationship with Naomi. Naomi say, look, look, you can go on back to your people. You, you young. You, you got your life ahead of you. You, 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 you fifthly and wonderfully made. So, so you can get yourself another husband. Uh, 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 uh. I've lost everything. I don't have nothing that I can offer to you. I cannot give you no more husbands. I, I, I'm looking... I, 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 I see the end of my road is closer than the beginning of it. That, that I can't do nothing for you. I've lost everything. You lost everything. You got some options. When you get options, you get other choices. Will you still stay devoted to the Lord? That godly devotion is tested through crises. That how much you say you love the Lord ain't tested. When every, it ain't really you don't know what you really got when everything going your way. You don't know what you really got when you got plenty of money in the bank. You don't know what you really, you don't know if you really, really love him when he's giving you every single thing that you want and your heart's desire. You, you, you don't really know how devoted you are to the Lord until it's tested in crises. 
Moses, as he's about to exit the ramp of life on this earth, he, he, he tells the, the, the people of God what God tells him. And he says in the book of Deuteronomy that the Lord God tested you to see if you would still obey his word, obey his covenant. I didn't give you every single thing that you wanted because I wanted to see how much you really love me. You, you could have got to the promised land in a few days, but we had to wander the hard way around so that you could learn how to fight and know how to do war as we learned last week. And, and and I want to see how much you want to obey me because as Jesus Christ says, if you love me, you'll obey me. So if you're going to say you love the Lord, then you need to measure it by how much you are obeying the Lord. If you're going to say I love you, no, no, don't tell me you love me and then you go do the opposite of what I tell you. Don't sit up and say you are committed to me and you don't want to obey my commandments. You don't want to do what I have told you. I've given you the blueprint to life. I've told you how to solve your problems. If you want to take it into your own hands instead of let yourself be under my wings and under my protection. I'm not sure how devoted you are to me. We see here Ruth, Orpah, get the exit ramp clause. Y'all been faithful. Y'all took to me. You all been good to me. But, but y'all got your life ahead of you. You got youth in front of you. <laughs> some of my young people right here. You, you got some options. And we see godly devotion is tested through crises. Romans chapter 5, verses 2 through 6 says, You've obtained access through your faith into the grace of God. And that's what you should stand on. That's what you should be devoted to. That's, that, that, that's what ought to carry you through. But, 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 but you need to rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. That God is going to return one day. And he's going to show you, Jesus Christ said he was. He's going to show you that every yes in him was amen. He's going to show you that he kept his word. One day you're going to behale him. And one day you're going to be perfected in every way as Jesus has perfected. But he says, look, you, 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 you know, you, you hope in the glory. But I need for you to know one thing. You need to rejoice in your suffering. You, you, you need to know that suffering produces endurance. You need to know endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put you to shame because God's love has been poured out on you through the Holy Spirit. That when you go through things, God show you how much he really loves you and how much you, he has you in the hollow of his hands. That when you are committed to him and you don't turn away from the Lord, that though your health may start to fail, though your money may get funny, may, though your children may seem like they driving you crazy. Though you may have been waiting and it seems like your biological clock is ticking and running out. He says, if you put your hope and trust in me, you're going to see how much I loved you because I'm going to keep you. I'm going to sustain you. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to love you like nobody else ever loved you. I'm going to understand you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to sustain you. He says, look, God's love has been poured out in our hearts. And God, Jesus, is real. He's giving you the Holy Spirit as a mark, as a sign, as a seal, as it says in the book of Ephesians. That he says, look, in Christ's seas, we're going to see how much you really love me. We see how much Ruth loves Naomi in Christ's seas. She's in her, she got home court advantage right now. She's in Moab. She's not in Bethlehem. She's not in, in Jerusalem yet. And, and, and she, she's with where her family is. She's, she's with where her little G's gods are. She, she's got all the delicacies of her culture and her environment. Going back to Bethlehem, going back to Jerusalem is risky business for a Moabite because she's not a part of the children of Israel. She's tested in crises as she's lost her husband. Her mother-in-law is leaving and going back. She could go on back to doing what she was doing before she met her husband. She could go on back to the way that she was living, but when she got an option to go on back, or, 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 or even instructed and told to go back, she decides that even in crises, I'm going to stay devoted to you, that, 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 that I'm not going to backslide because it's getting kind of shaky right now. I'm not going to give up on the Lord because I'm sitting there wondering how I'm going to pay the bills next week. I'm not going to backslide with them crazy folks that I used to run with. I used to 
used to hit the club with because I'm finding myself all by myself right now. It don't seem like nobody is understanding me. No, I'm going to stay committed to the Lord even in crises. In crises. I, I'm, 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 I'm hitched to you. She says, sister, mother, I, I'm with you. I'm going with you. I'm staying with you. We find godly devotion is rewarded by God. Verses seven, verses eight through nine, seven through nine. We find that godly devotion is tested through crises. Verses 11 through 13. You got to go through some stuff to know what you really got. That, 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 that when I was going through premarital counseling and the preacher was like, oh, yeah, I seen y'all tight before. Y'all all in love right now. You all in your feelings right now. But, 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 but we, we need to see how you're going to do when you go through some stuff. Uh, we need to see how you're going to do when you're sitting up in the house and y'all got some disagreements and you got to work that thing out. I want to see how much commitment you have, how much devotion you have. I want to see how you're going to act when the church vote don't go your way. When you don't get your what you wanted, are you still going to stay devoted to the Lord and also stay devoted to God's people? <laughs> I tell you all the time, I ain't let nobody run me out of my church. And I tell you, how are you going to let what somebody said to you cause you to leave your church? How are you going to let somebody tell you something and get up in your head and you know what God has told you, what God has in store for you, what God wants to do for you? Like, how are you going to let somebody look at you and you think you're going to walk out on the church? How are you going to let somebody forgot your name on Sunday and you're going to turn your back on the Lord? And when you look back over your life and all those times you forgot what God had told you and you didn't do what God had told you, you knew it was me. I was wrong. I, I was shaping in iniquity. I committed that sin. I'm guilty. And God still loved on you. God still put his wings out. He still put his arms out and welcomed you back time and time again. He still, when you prayed to him, he picked up the phone and he heard your cry. Oh, he loved you with an unchanging hand. He, he sustained you even when you didn't know what you was going to do. Crises test your devotion. Don't come up to me talking about you super Christian and you ready to ride or die for Jesus when everything's looking good and all the issues been well. Don't, don't come after, after all the problems have been dealt with and now you want to say, I want to lead. I want to accept the call. I want to serve in the church. But when it was all rocky and when it was shaky, when, it was, when folks weren't wondering what you're going to do next, you didn't want to have a part of that. Your devotion is shaped and tested by crises. <laughs> That's why I don't get mad. In the church meeting, you say something crazy. I don't get mad if the vote don't go my way. <laughs> I don't get mad if you get on the phone and tell somebody something that you know you should have come to me about. I don't get mad if you get in your feelings and say, I ain't coming back no more. I'm just going to get on my knees and pray. I'm going to get on my knees and, 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 and love on you because I say, oh, man, crises is happening. That means God is up to something. <laughs> that God is about to do something. Oh, 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 not all conflict is bad, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Now, not all conflict is bad. <laughs> There's some good conflict that can bring about some, some, some blessings. There's some conflict that can bring about some breakthroughs. In other words, you can't, you can't sweep it all under the rug. You can't sit there and act like it ain't no problem. You can't act like things are all right in the house. That's why I love good times. That Every single week you turned on that TV. They let you know the problems that was going on in the house. Nobody tried to hide it. Let the whole nation see it was some issues going in the house. But they were still devoted to one another. They were still loving one another. The family was still holding things together. Uh, 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 Walona and, and Florida's relationship was still thriving and, and flourishing in the midst of challenges. They could, they could argue um, on some issue. They could get mad at one another, but they could still work that thing out and love on one another. They would not turn their back on one another. And everybody, you know you need a friend. 
You need somebody who you know you can call in the midnight hour. You need somebody that you know they're going to not look at you and they're going to judge you, that they're going to understand what you're going through, and they'll tell you the truth. And when you get crazy in your head, they're going to still pick up the phone. They're going to still try to love you. They're going to still try to take care of you. Everybody needs a friend. That's why the psalmist said, oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> no, it's none like Jesus. It's none that can love you like Jesus. It's none, no other. Godly devotion is tested in crises. Your friendships, and if they really friendships, are tested in crises. Your marriage is tested in crises. Brothers and sisters who single, you think about getting married? Do you take a good look? before you drive it off the lot of how they handle crises. <laughs> don't, don't show them your, 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 your best day. <laughs> Let them see you and be yourself, be who you are. Don't, don't, don't do no charades. Don't, don't put on art form and see how crises is handled because godly devotion is tested in crises. Godly devotion is rewarded by God. <laughs> but one last thing, as we get ready to move to the exit round, we find that not only is godly devotion rewarded, not only is godly devotion tested, but godly devotion is courageous. <laughs> it's courageous. <laughs> see, 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 I read it so fast trying to get through those, all those verses we heard today. I should have slowed it down for you a little bit so you could see the courage of Ruth. Because Ruth is in Moab. Ruth got her friends. She got her social connections. She got the world that she knows. And now she decides that I'm gonna go back with you, Naomi, to your home. I'm gonna go back to the people. I'm gonna go with you to the people of God. I'm gonna forsake my little G's. I'm gonna to decide to follow you to a place where I don't know whether or not they're gonna accept me. I don't know whether or not they're gonna like me. I don't know how they're gonna look at me when they see us show up in Bethlehem. But I'm so committed to you. I'm so devoted to you that I'm gonna take the courage. I'm gonna take the risk because I know that if I'm connected to you, if I stay with you, that's where my blessing is going to be. That's where I'm going to get my reward. So I'm going to have some courage. What you're talking about, preacher, we as Christians, we as people of God, ought to have more courage. Why are we so quiet with all the issues in the land? I've told you before, well, we don't have no courage. We want to be liked. We, 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 we want to make stuff about politics instead of what thus saith the Lord. We want to put stickers on and identify ourselves with certain groups that don't want to have nothing to do with God's word. We want to we wanna be identified with everything but what has to do with the Lord and what is holy and what is, has to do with God. But why don't we have any courage? It ought not be so hard to do biblical justice. It ought not be too hard to take care of the poor and feed the poor. It ought not be too hard to help young people get their act together. It ought not be too hard to be a blessing to single mothers. It ought not be too hard to talk about police injustice. It ought not be too hard to talk about wealth and equity. It ought not be too hard to talk about um, gender discrimination. It ought not be too hard to talk about the inequities when it comes to pay between men and females. Why are we so quiet right now? Courage. The question is raised is how devoted are we or you to the Lord? How devoted are you to your brother and sister in Christ? How much risk are you willing to take for them? This past week, 
I have some, I can't get into all the specifics, I can't get to, but I'm gonna say, I, I got a group that I serve on, I, I got a particular couple of groups, I don't know what's going on right here, I got a couple of groups where we're trying to work on and talking about some justice kind of issues and, and what's the way we can turn around some of the challenges that we're seeing in our organizations and folks want to water it down, they don't want to talk about the stuff, they don't want to say what's wrong is wrong, they want to make it peachy cream, they want to be kumbaya, and I asked them this week, I said, how much risk are you willing to take? How much risk are you willing to take to change the culture, to change the world? How much risk are you willing to take to save your family? How much risk are you willing to take to save your marriage? Are you willing, to do, 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 are you committed that you take whatever risk is necessary to work that thing out, which means there's some changes that you're going to have to make. It's some stuff. You got to look at yourself in the mirror. Like, 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 like Michael Jackson said, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. I'm hoping that he can make the change. Because you get yourself right, then you can start to help get the family right. You can't talk about the, the, the logs and everybody else. You can't talk about the specks and everybody else's eye. And you got a big log jam right up in your own face. You need to get yourself together. How much risk are you willing to take? Devotion, godly devotion takes courage. It ought not have to say, you wear your faith on your shoulder. It, it ought to be the body of Christ, the church. We ought to be courageous. We ought to be able to stand up for what is right. We ought to be able to take the risk knowing that to live is Christ. To die is gain. To know that if I keep myself connected to Jesus Christ, I'm in the palm of his hand. God will keep me. God will sustain me. God will bring me out of this way. God will make a way out of somehow. We need to have more courage. The church, our families, stop being so quick to walk out. I'm challenging you today. Stop being so quick to walk out on your marriage. Stop being so quick to give up on your children. Stop being so quick to give up on your unsaved friends. Stop ceding territory. How much risk? Are you willing to take? Ruth, Ruth says, I'm going to put it all on the line. Sister girl, I'm going with you. Your, your, your God, Big G, going to be my God. <laughs> your, your people going to be my people. That's why I'm going to tell you, you need to ask yourself, uh, 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 why, why, why don't you spend no time with Jesus, people? And you spend all that time with folks that want to have nothing to do with Jesus, and you're not trying to lead them to Christ. <laughs> she says, my people... Your people are my people. Oh, uh, oh, uh, if, if, if you die, I'm going to die with you. But look, she says it's so deep. She says, may the Lord judge me if I don't do it. Every day when you wake up, you ought to be wondering, how, how am I growing in my devotion to the Lord? That's why we got a little simple word. We call it devotion. You ought to have some time to go read God's word. You ought to have some time to pray to the Lord. You ought to spend some time in God's word. That's a good step. Let's talk about devotion. And then let's work on our devotion to one another, our commitment to one another, which means I'm not going to talk bad about you. I'm not going to gossip about you. I am committed to you. I will take have courage to stand up for you, even though it may look like I don't even have a ground or leg to stand on, but because you are a child of God, because you are my brother and sister in Christ. No, you ain't going to talk about her that way. You ain't going to treat her that way. I know she made some mistakes. I know he messed up, but that's my brother and sister in Christ. They are part of God's family. I'm going to take some courage and stand up for my brother and sister in Christ. He says, look, Ruth shows courage. Ruth is tested in crisis. Ruth, it is prophesied, it's said, will be rewarded. And by the time we arrive at the end of the book of Ruth, it's only four chapters, you can read it. You can read it almost before you can walk out the door or something, if you read fast. That, that by the time we get to chapter four, we see Ruth's reward. <laughs> because Ruth marries Boaz who's the kinsman redeemer. He redeems her. She, 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 she gets a whole lot and then some because of her faithfulness 
to Naomi. Did, did I tell you, Ruth gets in the family of God because she stays connected to Naomi. She marries Boaz, and Boaz, they have a son by the name of Obed, and Obed, they have a son by the name of Jesse, and as it ends, it says, Jesse is the father of David, the king of Israel, the, the man after God's own heart, the man in which all kings are compared to in the Old Testament, that G David becomes the standard by which kings are compared, that, that Ruth is written into the pages of scripture because she has been committed to Naomi. She's been committed to this woman of God. She's decided to forsake all others for the people of God. She's decided to follow Naomi wherever Naomi goes. And she lets Naomi's God become her God. And God hooks her up. She gets written in the pages of scripture and David is born as a result and then Jesus Christ comes in the lineage of David. It's Jesus Christ, the long-awaited Davidic king that is born. And look at that, because of Ruth's faithfulness. Oh, and some folks in your family who can be written into the pages of scripture if you are faithful with a little bit and he'll make your master over much. There's some folks God is waiting for you to evangelize and tell them about Jesus and show them the love of Christ and your walk and your testimony with God. It's some folks that God wants to write into the scriptures, write into the book of life and God is waiting for you to get off the bench and commit yourself to the Lord and commit yourself to the cause of Christ. That God can hook your family up, he can hook your marriage up, he can hook your job situation up if you would just commit yourself to the Lord. As I prepare to close, I was sitting there in one of those kind of state of minds this week where, where I needed to I need to listen to some of my good old school soul music. And I found myself listening to perhaps one of the best ever bands that was ever created, a band by the name of Earth, Wind, and Fire. That, that I was sitting there, I had to listen to all 16 of the albums this week. And I was just riding down the street every day. And as I was reading and listening to, to Earth, Wind, and Fire, I found that many of them songs had a lot to do about God. That they had a song called help somebody and they had another song called Spirit and also the album was named Spirit. They had a song called Burning Bush that they was talking about. They had a song called Fan the Fire. They have a song called King I Can Feel It in My Bones and they got another song that says they don't see and they got another song that says remember the children. One called Evil and one called Let My Feelings Show and Keep Your Head to the sky and another one says open your eyes and, and then that great song called shining star but when it was when I got to that other great song it was a song by the name that's called devotion and this song talks about being devoted and being devoted to God in fact it took it a step further and said you need devotion you need devotion and then it said bless the children deliver us from the fruits of evil and I just stopped by 61 Winthorpe Street and on your TV and mobile device to tell you you need devotion. You, you, you need to commit yourself to some. You need some committed folks in your life. You need the church. You need your brother and sister in Christ. Do I have a witness that your life is better since you've gotten to know Jesus Christ? Your life has been made better since you came into the church and you got fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Your life has been made better since your deacon and start calling you to see how you doing and saying they're praying for you. Your life has been made better when you was about to say something crazy and risk it all and then your brother and sister in Christ said, no, no, slow it down for a moment because they was devoted to you. They was committed to you. They, they love you on your worst day. They wanted you to be the best that you are all that God has called you to be. But God, as I always tell you, wouldn't tell you to do something that God would not do himself. That's why the Bible says that he, that he that began a good work in you will fulfill it on the day of the Lord. That God is committed and devoted to you. He's committed to you being blessed. He's committed to you getting to heaven. He is committed.
committed you, committed to you fulfilling your purpose that he's given in life. And he puts a, he puts a, he puts an insurance policy on it because he says after he's died on the cross and he's resurrected from the dead, he shows up a few times. Up one is in Matthew chapter 28, and he says, "I want you to go make disciples. I want you to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I commanded you." But lo, I'm with you to the end of time. Don't worry. I'm not going to tell you to do something and leave you by yourself. Don't worry, disciples. When I tell you to get on the boat, I'm going to get on the boat with you. I'll show up right when you need me. Don't worry about how you're going to feed them. I'm right there with you. I am devoted to you. I'm devoted to the point that I'll die on the cross. I, am, I can have joy and die on the cross because I am devoted to you. All I need for you to do is just wait on me. Just wait on me. Wait for me to do it. Wait for me to move in your life. Wait for my Holy Spirit to speak to you. Wait and don't move on your own accord, but move in the unity of the Spirit. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. That's devotion, and he'll make your path straight. Your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. That is devotion, church. Oh, come here, Abraham. I want you to go on and follow me, and I'll make you father of many nations. I'm making a promise to you. I don't even ask you to even do anything but just walk by faith, and I walk and, and not by sight, and I will bless you because God is devoted to you. Come on over here, Elijah. You thought you was doing it all by yourself. You thought that it was by your power. You thought it was by your might, but I got a bunch of more folks that I'm working. I got a bunch of more folks that are proclaiming my word. I got your back. I'm going to keep you. I know Jeremiah. You getting tired of dealing with them church folks. They getting on your last nerve talking about you and backstabbing. I know you want to quit. I know you want to stop preaching. I know you want to throw in the towels, but keep being devoted to me because every time you want to quit, it's like fire. Shut up in your bones that when you don't want to say it, God still tell you to say it. That's devotion. That when you want to shut up and they try to shut you up in the city square, I can't be quiet. I'll be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the ward. I won't grow weary in doing good because I'll reap a harvest of righteousness if I faint not. Wait on the Lord. He'll renew your strength. You'll mount up like eagles and soar. You will walk and not grow weary. You will, you will run and not grow weary. You will walk and not faint. Be not dismayed, whatever beside betides you. Um, the trust the, be not dismayed with whatever betides you. Um, trust in the Lord. Beneath his wings the love abide. God will take care of you. He took care of you in the past. He's taking care of you right now. He'll take you, take care of you in the future. Godly devotion is rewarded by God. Devote yourself to God. He got your back. Godly devotion is tested in crises. Maybe because you got so on fire for the Lord, it's looking, it's getting tough right now. Testing it. Stay devoted to the Lord. Don't give up on God. Godly devotion is courageous. It is courageous in practice. You, you can't be quiet. You can't look at injustice. You can't look at this mess going on in ton. And I have nothing to say. I said it. I thought my phone would be ringing off the hook at the nonsense I'm seeing on the public TV. Folks crying in the city square. Folks are dogging folks out. And the church is mysteriously quiet. People hurt and they starving. And the church is quiet. Godly devotion, courage, courage. Don't tell me you love me, <laughs> but you ain't got my back. <laughs> when it's looking bad for me when my back is up against the wall. Don't tell me you love me that when it gets tough, you cut and run. Don't tell me you love me and you are not willing to connect yourself with the church, with Jesus. 
even to the point of death. Because he died on the cross. He was good as dead. He died for you. But he got up on the third day with all power, all authority, and he gave it to the church. He gave you that power. He said, you will do better things. You will do better things than me. Do you believe it? Let the church say amen. So as we prepare to open the doors of the church, <laughs> you've heard it, godly devotion. But God sets the example. God is so committed to creation. It says in his word that, that the creation groans, it moans in eager expectation, anticipation for the children, the sons, of the, the daughters of God to be revealed. 